This is the uh, end of course algebra one practice test two question number 19. The question says which function represents the data shown in the table below. Now if you look at the data you've got your independent and dependent variables with your x being the independent one and the y or the f of x being the dependent. It tells me it's a function so I can pretty much guess in most cases that this is likely to be linear but we're going to test that theory. What I need to do is figure out if there's any change between each group and there is of course. All of these are going up by 2. On the other side everything is actually going down and they're all going down 6 so it's linear in relationship that's why the answer choices are written like y equals mx plus b form slope intercept form in a linear form so what I'm gonna do first or the first way I'm gonna solve this one to show you how to do it is I'm just gonna make a list if I know it's linear I can make a list it makes my life much easier I'm gonna go in or not necessarily that much easier. I'm going to go into the list section. I hit the stat button on my T84+. Plus. There's a little bit of ghosting on the calculator. I'm not sure why. I'm going to hit enter. I've already plugged mine in because I was doing it before for while well, another video is loading to make sure it worked. And uh, it did, shockingly. So once I get it all typed in, I'm going to quit out. Then I'm going to go back into the list section again. I hit the stat button. Go over to calc because that's where you do calculations. And you're going to go down to number four to do a linear regression. That's what linreg means. It even has the mx plus b form, except they like to use the letter a as opposed to m. Whatever. It's their prerogative. Texas Instruments makes their calculators the way they want. Hit enter. It makes sure that it says what it's supposed to say. Hit enter again, and it gives you your answer. It says when y equals ax plus b, the answer that you're looking for for a would be negative 3, and b would be 8. So this really means y equals negative 3x plus 8. If it gave you a minus 8 or a negative 8, you'd put negative 3x minus 8, but it didn't. It gave you positive 8. I'm just saying, you know, for future reference. So I can go back and look at my answer choices, and this one seems to match perfectly to A. So I can say with pretty reasonable certainty that number 19 is A. And in this case, da da da, it is A. Uh, what about if that's not a way that you want to do it? You want to look at it as a linear regression. You'd like to look at it in a different way. Well, the idea of a function is that it's sort of like a machine. The x values are your dependent or your independent variables or sort of like your inputs. And your y values are sort of like your outputs. So when I punch out in 2, I should get 2 back. When I punch in 4, I should get negative 4 based on using the right system or setting up the right machine. So all I'm going to do is test my sample machines to see which gives me the results that I want. And by that I mean, so I'm, say I pick A, which is the correct answer. When I plug in 2 to this, I should get 2. When I plug in 4, I should get negative 4. When I plug in 6, I should get negative 10. And when I plug in 8, I should get negative 16. So if you do negative 2 times 3 gives you negative 6 plus 8 does give you 2. So I plugged in this and I got this. Check, check. If I plug in 4 and negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus 8 gives you negative 4. So I plugged in this and I got this. Check, check. Uh, negative 18 would be negative 3 times 6. Plus 8 should give me negative 10. So I plugged in this, got this, and the last one, negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. Plus 8 does take me all the way back to negative 16. So my input's give me my output, so this is the correct answer. To show that it doesn't work with other ones, and by the way, if you find one that works for the first group, make sure you do at least two more, because sometimes they'll follow the pattern correctly for the first couple, and then it just falls all to pieces. So if you plug in two, make sure you plug in four and six as well. You probably don't have to plug all four in. Most of the time it's okay to get a reasonable guess at a certain number. So say I do B, negative three, uh, and I'm going to plug in two, minus 8, and it should give me 2. But negative 3 times 2 is, of course, negative 6, and then if I took 8 away, it would give me negative 14. This is my input, and this is my output. That does not match what is shown here and here. I should get 2. So I know that this one is not the correct answer. Uh, for the next one, if I did 3 times 2 uh, plus 8, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 8 gives me positive 14. C can't work either. Um, for D, if I plug in 2, it would be 3 times 2 is 6, minus 8 gives me negative 2. It's not the same as positive 2, and if you went into 4, you'd get 
negative, uh, you get 3 times 4 gives you 12, minus 8 gives you positive 4. Not really working for you. It's just not going anywhere. It needs to be the negative numbers. And if you did 3 times 6, it gives you 18, minus 8 gives you positive 10. So this is like the complete backwards version, but it's still not right. This gives me the input output that I want. That's the answer I'm going to choose to be correct in case you don't want to do linear regression. So that's it.